Howdy folks, Donnie here with the Begin Linux Guru Linux Security Report. And this is going to be our first one. Hopefully it will be the first of many. I'm hoping to make this a semi-regular feature here on my channel. The first report here I want to look at is from the register. .co.uk. It's about the libpng library, about a really, really ancient bug in it. And libpng, of course, it's going to contain the code which will help display your PNG graphics files and all that. Apparently, it's nothing real earth shattering, but it was something that they found, I believe, on 30 December. It was found by the security team at Slackware, and they've already issued a patch for it. But uh, it's, uh, it also says here it cannot be exploited without active user input. And it also says that the sequence of events required in order to exploit this vulnerability is fairly unlikely. But they still say it has happened. So I'm not real sure about exactly what this is doing. But just from reading the description here, it looks like it's probably some sort of a buffer overflow problem. And it's probably going to be either uh, used to either crash the system or to maybe perform some sort of uh, malicious code execution. That's usually what your buffer overflows are for. The bug track is right there. This is where they filed the report for it. And there's no mention so far about whether this bug is present in all Linux distros or if it's just in Slackware. So here on this Fedora machine, I did do a DNF upgrade. And I see there, there's nothing there about the libpng library. And uh, I don't remember if there was anything in there about that the last time I upgraded, which was a couple of days ago. But uh, anyway, uh, we just have to keep your eyes and ears open and keep your systems updated. And so if this bug does exist in other Linux distros, then just doing your normal system upgrades will bring in the fix for it. Also, packet security storm Dot com. Very good website to keep up with the latest and greatest security news, not just with Linux, but with all operating systems, network devices, pretty much everything else. And we can go down here. We see we have a few Red Hat security advisories. And this one is concerning the Ghost Script Suite which has utilities for rendering PostScript and PDF documents. And uh, what it's saying here is that GoScript can be used here with this flaw in order to leak some information. So not real earth shattering, but again, go ahead and keep up with your patches, keep up with your updating, and be sure to get that patch installed. Another one here for Ubuntu. The name switch service incorrectly handled certain invalid Diffie-Hellman keys. So and a, rem a remote attacker could possibly use this flaw to cause NSS to crash, resulting in a denial of server. And it affects Ubuntu 12.04 LTS, 14.04 LTS, Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, which is interesting. Nothing mentioned there about the non-LTS versions of Ubuntu. But uh, of course, in the enterprise, you know, on, on an enterprise server, nobody would be using the non-LTS versions anyway. But uh, still, for home users, if you're whether you're using an LTS version or a non-LTS version of Ubuntu, again, be sure to keep your system updated and get those patches applied. And then we got a few applications. Problems there, Audacity, DLL hijacking. That sounds like uh, Windows, though. Wind only Windows does DLLs. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. And down here, Gen 2 Linux. Problems with Mozilla Firefox, CMonkey, and Thunderbird. And I forgot to mention, too, in that first article over here, 
uh, the Slackware team did say that they found some problems in Mozilla Thunderbird and the, the Mozilla SeaMonkey browser. So uh, that's another reason to keep your system updated. And another Red Hat one there, Node.js, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to read each and every one of them here, but you get the idea. In the description below the video, I will add the links here to these different uh Articles so you can come in and read them yourself. ZDNet.com Android infecting Trojan malware uses your phone to attack your router. So this is called the Switcher Trojan. And this is a problem that I thought had been fixed a long time ago, but this is just a way for attackers to come in and change the DNS settings on your wireless router which will make it so that when you think that you're going to your favorite website, your favorite legitimate website, the new DNS settings that this malware is planning is really directing your machine to the attacker's own counterfeit website. So, I mean, you could you could th maybe think that you're going into your your uh, real banking website and find yourself instead at a counterfeit website and if you don't notice that and you enter in your security credentials guess what the attackers are going to get your security credentials now uh, this is a problem that was around a long time ago with just regular DNS it, it was possible in order to to corrupt DNS on uh, Linux and Windows computers and do the same thing but the problem has been fixed pretty much on uh, the desktop machines. Well, now it's in Android, and it's because of a Trojan that uh, the, the attackers can plant on your system. So if you're running Android, and of course this, this is all connected in with Linux because Android does run on the Linux kernel, but uh, if you're running Android, you know, be sure just be extremely careful of what you download and install on your Android device. Then over here, also ZDNet.com, Linux 2017 with great power comes great responsibility. And this is an article from Stephen J. Von Nichols, who's one of the token Linux people there at ZDNet.com. But uh, basically here, uh, and, and again, I'm not going to go over it here all in detail. I'll let you look at it later. But uh, basically, it's uh, just the fact that, yeah, we've had some security problems throughout 2016 with Linux. And it's also mentioning the fact that, that Linux is becoming more popular than it ever has been before. You know, it, it's run the entire, well, not the entire, but almost the entire uh, World Wide Web for a very long time and it runs most of the su supercomputers in the world and it's very very big in the enterprise and now uh, more and more people it seems like are starting to try Linux on the desktop and this guy here from Tech Republic is predicting that the Linux desktop market share will finally breach the 5% mark at some point this year. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, it's been stuck at about one and a half percent or so, you know, for a very, very long time. I don't know if it's ever going to break beyond that or not, but still, there is the fact that more and more people are starting to try Linux on the desktop. Microsoft hasn't exactly helped itself with that because they keep doing stupid things like with uh, all these controversial Windows 10 update problems and all that and of course Mac uh, I don't think really helped itself I mean Apple rather hasn't really helped itself either with this new MacBook Pro that really really isn't that much of a pro machine so more and more people are trying out Linux on the desktop and he's basically saying here that the uh, attackers will find more and more incentive to go after Linux desktop users when uh, uh, the the popularity of Linux grows. So anyway, uh, and he's also laying out there the problem with code checking. Linux, of course, is free open source. So anybody 
who wants to can download the source code and look through it, examine it, and see if there are bugs. And the, the theory uh, has always been that since the source code is open and anybody can look at it, that there are just more eyes in the code in order to catch the security bugs. Well, unfortunately, that hasn't worked out all that well. Uh, I mean, it has to a certain extent, but there's still been problems because, you know, not everybody who uses Linux is a developer or a programmer. I mean, I could take the source code for a Linux kernel and I could look at it and it would all be gibberish to me. I wouldn't have the least idea of what's going on. So anyway, 2016, of course, we did have two major security problems. The Luke's disk encryption was a problem where you could boot up a machine with an encrypted disk and perform a certain sequence of keystrokes and break into the machine without having to enter any type of a password. And we had the Dirty Cal a Linux mem memory problem and a few other less important uh, Linux bugs as well. But they were all you know, fixed rather quickly after they were found. But on the other hand, there have been bugs that have been around for years. And this one, for example, that we just looked at has been around since 1995. Yeah, and in the past, we've seen other problems, uh, problem with the bash shell, the shell shock, and heart bleed, uh, a few other problems that have been around for multiple years as well. So anyway, what can you do about that? Well, basically, uh, learn how to report bugs. That's one good thing. If you find bugs, learn how to report them. And also, you got to have some integrity and you got to have enough willpower and integrity to resist the financial motivation of selling these bugs to the bad guys when you find them. So this guy here, an Irish developer, recently uncovered a pair of Ubuntu desktop bugs and he reported that he received an offer more than $10,000 from an exploit vendor for these app port bugs. And these financial motivators are only increasing as software gets more secure and bugs become more difficult to find. And uh, here he's saying it's actually small potatoes because a Linux bug that could encrypt data on a server you could uh, possibly see a six-figure ransomware price. So yeah, so what's been done about these security problems and being able to find these bugs? Well, the Linux Foundation has started the Core Infrastructure Initiative, which has been a big help so far. And the reason they started that is because after the Heartbleed issue came to light in the SSL libraries a couple of years ago, it was found out that a lot of these different software development projects, which actually are working on these core infrastructures that are super important, that are critical to the internet and to safe network computing, they're just severely underfunded and understaffed. So the Linux Foundation started this core infrastructure initiative in order to help solve those problems. They've raised money and they actually will help fund these, uh, these different development projects. And you can come here and read about that as well. And shows there some of the people who are rather some of the companies that are involved in helping out with that. So uh, yeah, you've got a lot of a lot of uh, good horsepower there and money involved in this project. So hopefully that will help things and will help make our favorite operating system a lot more safe. And uh, of course, remember too, though, folks. Bugs are still always going to happen regardless of how careful you are, of how much money is involved in a project, you know, because, you know, the developers, they're human, just like you and I are, they make mistakes. So, uh, so just keep your systems updated, keep them patched, keep on top of the security news, and uh, especially so if you are a systems administrator in an enterprise market or in any kind of business, and, uh, Hopefully that will all help you out and keep your systems nice and safe and secure as possible.
Okay, so anyway, I think that's pretty much it there for today's Linux security report. If you like the videos, be sure to like and subscribe. And there will be links to these articles in the description below. And we will see you next time.